I do agree with you, David. Walking around um, Birmingham, as I said earlier, I spent some time with the Chancellor. I talked to the Prime Minister. I talked to other Cabinet Ministers. There was a sense of, you know, they, they were trying not to come across as ruffled. Uh, I'm wondering if that's because they are deluded or because they're statesmanlike. I haven't quite made up my mind. The other thing I noticed... David, as I'm sure you did, there were lots of young people. Absolutely. There were lots of younger MPs, the 2017 and above all the 2019 intake of MPs, particularly from those red wall constituencies. But there weren't really that many other MPs. Some of them might use the excuse of the train strike, of course, the RMT yes. rail union conveniently put the, uh, the latest train strike apart from today on the Wednesday, the day of the Prime Minister's speech. So a lot of MPs didn't stick around for that. But in general, there weren't that many MPs. As a political editor of one of Britain's great newspapers, are you sensing ferment and rebellion once more on those Conservative backbenches? There definitely is a section of the party that is grievously unhappy with what's going on, who don't see themselves as libertarians, and who look at the type of um, economists who are influencing uh, Liz Truss with something bordering dismay. Now, the question is, are they actually going to win the day? Um, one of the, the problems with having had a relatively weak opposition for a long time is that parties in government can start to look at other members of their own party as the real opposition. Now, there is nothing, however, like some shocking poll ratings to focus the mind. And also, I think we saw in Liz Truss's speech the, how it was the disturbance by the Greenpeace protesters which actually transformed what had been quite a tense room and a, a real sense of it was going okay, but not anything stellar. Whenever those protesters got up, suddenly the hall was united and people shouting them down. And you could see this trust realizing that, wow, everyone, no matter what faction they were from, were suddenly cheering her on, willing her to succeed. And then it was as if there was an adrenaline bolt in her herself. And we saw a smile, which is interesting. We, we used to see it a lot. And sometimes you don't realise you haven't seen something for a long time until it suddenly returns. But the smile that was so familiar when she was Foreign Secretary, when she was especially International Trade Secretary and Jet Setting, suddenly it was as if she had her mojo back, to use that cliche, and was ready to take on all comers. And I think that's what we're going to see in the coming weeks. However, that's not to underplay the enormity of the challenge she faces in, in, in uniting her own party. Because one of the key questions is, where on earth did the spending cuts come from? And we're already seeing huge dissension on the question of whether the benefits should be upraised by inflation, as Boris had indicated would happen, or by earnings. Now, it is not just left-leaning think tanks that are horrified by this. We can see lots of people who are saying, you know, at the end of the day, you know, we have just won seats in the red wall. Our voters do not vote for us because they are impassioned about a small state vision. They are impassioned about us because, well, they offered the best uh, vision for how public services could be financed, and they didn't trust Jeremy Corbyn to do that. So how she gets people behind that, how she can find savings that don't result in rebellions at every single turn, that is going to require every ounce of her diplomacy, and her whips office are going to have to be working overtime.